Hello ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the Premier League sponsored by Trish TV, hosted by Angel, and brought to you guys by DotaComTears.com. I am Luminous from DC, and today we're going to cast Navi vs. Complexity, game number two of a best of two series. And before you guys tell me, yes, I need to change the overlay. <laughs> of course, joining me alongside is the illustrious, ever illustrious, Nebu Wanna. Oh yeah, buddy. Uh, immediately Complexity goes ahead and bans the uh, chin. Nice to see that. Now we have a bit of a staring contest here going. Navi has the second pick, but they don't, they're wondering whether or not to ban Invoker would be my guess. Uh, they did ban Darkseer immediately, as that's, you know, pretty standard ban advanced complexity. Complexity goes ahead and bans Anti-Mage yet again. So there is a Furion, a Rasta, and an Invoker still in this pool. Um, so expect to see two of those three heroes in this game. I'm really praying right now uh, that Navi does not ban Invoker. Um, the, the question to me is, does Complexity have an Invoker player? I do not know. Do, do you know? Of course they do. Every pro I mean, they have to have an Invoker player, obviously, but do you know who it is or how, how good it is? I don't, because it's always packed, so we'll see. Exactly, exactly. So I, I'm pretty interested right now to see which, which Navi goes with, and they're taking their sweet time figuring out. They're even into bonus time by a full 40 seconds. So this is probably the most crucial pick uh, in this in this whole series right now, deciding what to remove. If they, if they don't ban Rasta, they're giving Rasta to TC, and as we mentioned before, that is a really poor choice. If they don't ban Invoker, and then come to find out Complexity has a ridiculous Invoker player, it's equally terrible. So I, I uh, say, you know what, Here here's the crazy theory craft. I say you do a random ban, give them the Invoker, and you go with Furion, take the other two? Furion and yeah. Shadow Shaman, and just go push. Right. Absolutely. And if you want to have the Invoker, you're giving them Rasta, and then you get Furion and Invoker as well, so... Um, you know, it's not bad. I, I think yeah. I think you're exactly right. So I, I would probably go with a band on like a wind runner that they regularly pick up and use very well. Yep, yeah, Beastmaster exactly. Puppy goes ahead and nails it on the head there. So uh, really nice, really nice band there. Let's see how Complexity responds. Which of those heroes do they want most? My guess is going to be Invoker or Ross. It's still but... Invoker, right? You just want no, yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. And immediately grabs the Invoker. So. We're going to see Fury and Veto Man. Wow. Oh. So they're actually going to give Rasta to TC. Now, is TC their invoker player as well? That's a that's a good question because that that could be a, a bit of a rough situation. There. Yeah, the, the situation is not that, you know, no one else could play uh, invoker or Rasta. The, the problem sure. with Dota 2 right now, there's no sheer control command because if this is Dota 1, TC is playing both heroes yeah. at the same time. <laughs> and still making it, you know, you're adding up about 20 stuns between the two heroes and TC. He's, he's got it, you know. Look, Unfortunately, this is Dota 2. Rasta, that's not that many spells, to be honest. No, man, that's, totally do. that's pretty bo easy. Both of them are pretty easy heroes, uh, so TC's got that under control. If Valve is um, watching this, where's that shirt control? Come on, man. Somebody, somebody PM'd me and said that they believe TC is, in fact, their invoker player. So... Um, I believe that is a problem that they're actually kind of thinking about it right now. So the Fury and Venomancer pick from uh, from Navi's is could be problematic for for complexity. They have given away the Fury into a team that knows how to execute map control and how to make you pay for uh, for team fighting. So we see a visual pair picked up here from complexity. Not sure that they needed to grab this so early, but they did go ahead and do it. Uh, although I believe it got banned in the second phase last time, but I think that was by complexity, yeah. not Navi. I, I think I think part of it is also because if you look at the heroes, they are going to pick up Barasa. And uh, I want to go back to that Enchantress in just a bit. I was going to say that the issue with these heroes that they usually like to pick up so early, the Windrunner, the Barasa, they are all TC's hero. And as awesome as he is, he only can play one hero at once. So some of these heroes gotta have to be shift to be played by uh, some other people. But you know, again, they're all great players, so don't don't expect yeah. uh, anything less from them. Of course, like I said in game number one, I was saying even if the Chen is gonna be banned, Enchantress is gonna be picked up by Puppy, and that's exactly what we see here. So not no too uh, big of a surprise here. Sand King and Broodmother gets uh, axed, and uh, well, are we gonna go into a carry mode game for either of these teams? It's hard to because. Pushing power on either team is, is so strong. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go AFK one minute, so you're know. Okay, Nebula. Brewing a little bit more tea under this pick, man. And uh, Complexity here, they have some really, really good ganking potential and counter ganking as well. Rasa with a Blink Dagger, which I, I see Complexity do very, very frequently. Um, and of course, the, the, the Invoker counter ganking with Tornado is insane. Ventral Spear is a trending support lately, uh, it's been winning a lot of games. And the question is, are we going to have seen more supports? Are we going to see a Crystal Maiden here on the Dire side uh, so far? Uh, Venge, Venge plus another jungler could be decent, although there's not many junglers left. Meanwhile, the Radiant side quite set on the support. As Venomancer and Enchantress both is going to be on the support role. It's going to be a Lifestealer. This is very strange. 
maybe a little bit afraid of the uh, global TP, invest TP. Then he plays a very decent life stealer. He goes uh, Midas into Armlet into Maelstrom and Divine Rapier. Some some crazy combination of that sort. Uh, def definitely difficult to deal with against. And of course, what does Rage, uh, the, the the magical immunity against this squad here, it can be a little bit dangerous. So did you get nice. rid of that life stealer? Um, I like the next fan here. It's good. Yeah. It's decent. I just I, I just want to comment real fast. I just poured boiling hot water all over my left hand, and uh, in my in my fit of rage to get back to watch this spectacular series, uh, game two, I did uh, I did do that. So I'm like our or I'm like tasteless right now. I don't care if I got a bludgeon to bloody um, eye infection. I'm gonna cast this. That hurts though. <laughs> you just man it up. No problem. I am. I am. But I'm probably gonna man it up and cry like a girl throughout the cast. So just. So far, we, have a, we had a Quat ban here as the fourth. Very interesting ban. It's almost like it's almost like they didn't want to ban anything else. Does t does uh, complexity play a lot of Queen of Pain? I, I suppose they do. I'm sure Navi did more homework than I did, uh, yeah. but I have not seen. I personally have not seen complexity play Queen of Pain, so I'm not too sure, sure what that one's out of. And Wimmer gets picked up here. We might actually see a little bit of a support Wimmer. That's definitely very capable, as the hero has quite a bit of potential. Um, but again, we're seeing a similar situation as we do at Heyo! Yes! This this is the pick I, I want to see from Navi here. A little bit of Pudge Dindy action, baby. Oh, this is going to be good. Can I be a fanboy for a second? Yes. Okay. How nice is it to have Dota 2 matches that are this hyped, that are getting this many viewers, that actually start on time? Yes! And still that having some of the most perfect gameplays. Oh man, spectacular gameplay, and we're seeing some sweet picks. We're yes. seeing an ogre and a pudge in the same game. Yes, I like it. I like it. The most uninteresting hero here is like Venomancer. Yeah. Past that, we got an Enchantress, we got a Fury, we got some Rasta going on, a little bit of Windrunner. Uh, let's see what their fifth is here. Now their lanes are probably going to be Invoker middle, though they could put actually they could put Invoker up top and have him farm and have the Rasta middle, uh, and then put Windrunner bottom and maybe have. Uh, a dual lane? Of some yeah, kind? I don't even want to guess. There's so many dual mids in, in this situation. Maybe, if, especially against a Pudge. Dual mid Let's against see some Pudge. Axe. Let's see some Axe Jungle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Axe actually would be a decent choice in this game. Every one of these heroes so low in HP is going to be Enigma. There's the, there's the jungler. So I think we are going to have a dual. Leshrac picked up as the fifth from uh, Navi, so doing a very, very nice AoE pushing strategy here. Um, I mean, it, but it also gives them a lot of team fight. No heals in this game, so we're going to see the complete opposite. Well, we do have, I guess, uh, Enchantress's heal, but that's not really that impressive. So kind of the antithesis of uh, game two, game one here, where everybody, every battle was very long and very prolonged by just a lot, massive amount of heals. I expect to see a little bit more initiation-based battles here. We do have TC playing Rossless, so that means Invoker is going to be played by Jo. Uh, Fluff and Stuff is going to be playing that Enigma, probably top jungle. Ix Microsoft is going to be supporting the Invoker in that top lane, and bottom is going to be Hannah Montana playing his Windrunner. Hannah's not going to have a fun time. He's going to get uh, his... Well, the pool is going to be happening, as uh, you can see Navi right now strolling down the bottom lane, preventing that ward to be dropped off. It is going to be Puppy on the uh, Enchantress for sure. Arzart playing the Venomancer. Dendi, of course, on that Pudge. Havol's playing the Lesh, and we have... Who, who is playing the Furion? Light of Heaven. On the free hand. Yep. <clears throat> Alright, so the lanes the lanes for Three Sentinel, seconds. or for Radiant rather, um, a bit more interesting. We're probably going to have, uh, obviously, Puppy and Jung. Let's look at it. It's going to be Leshark and Vino at the uh, bottom lane. They're going to have a probable solo Furion up top who's going to just obviously just keep that lane from getting completely pushed and then maybe TB for some gangs. And it looks like it's going to be Dindy solo mid, of course, with Pudge. So. Yeah, I'm liking the Furion top solo a little bit more than the Windrunner. Windrunner has the escape ability. But Furion, he could do some shenanigans. You summon the Treants and then you, you send it over behind a creep wave. Exactly. And you do a crazy pull and then you pull it next to your tower. Uh, Windrunner does not, uh, cannot do that. And of course, with the pulling going on, the stack pulling of this bot camp, yeah, that Windrunner is not going to see a creep until like minute five. It's not going to be fun for her. No, no, it's going to be very rough. I mean, uh, Furion, he does a similar thing that the Silver does, is we see those Treants yep. running right up there. They're going to go ahead and uh, just get that Creep Wave aggro, go ahead and pull that down. Actually, he's Damage. not pulling it down, he is running it back. Oh, this is even more interesting. He's actually just trying to delay the Ah, creep. he's going to stack. Nice. This is a uh, this is very nice play. Oh, man. I love seeing Furion shenanigans here. Um, oh, we got a bit of some fights from Fluff and stuff. Should we get a pause, maybe? Yep. Oh, looks like maybe they have passed and we are fine here. Now, Invoker uh, does go, go Quas level 1, so giving him a, a lot of region in lane. It's basically a free ring of health in lane, which is 
kind of ridiculous when you think about it, but that's like, whatever. Well, and here, here we go. This big creep wave is coming now. Don't try, don't try this at home recklessly, because against a pushing lineup here, you could just means that you just lost your tier one tower. But against the Invoker and Bench, who's not exactly the best pushers? You're, you're fine here. Uh, so right now they're getting, uh, well, right now he's not seeing any EXP, but well, he will see a bountiful amount just a little bit from now. Um, we want the bottom here. Hannah has actually seen a creep and actually got some EXP. No pulling going on just yet, but here comes the pull from Arza. It is going to be Lesh getting the EXP. I like it. Lesh does so much damage, just a level 7, maxing that Diabolic Edict, which is, I assume, a skill choice that he is going to be maxing. We're seeing about 1600, yes, 1600 points of damage from a full barrage of Diabolic Edict. Of course, it deal with mixed damage, so it is reduced yes. by armor and magical resistance. Uh, so that number you, you place it on one hero and it's right. still going to assassinate them definitely. Still. Uh, it's a really very strong skill and of course it also hits towers as well so it's very very aggressive for their general philosophy of hey let's kill all of your crap. So of course back in the middle. Dindy in middle, yeah, go ahead and uh, check that out. Yeah, Dindy on the middle. I want to check out on CS here. Dindy's got five and two, and now TC seven and four got the bottle already, and the nuke starts, and Dindy already going on the top room, getting the regen. One of the best ways to deal with Rasa in the middle lane is deny the runes. Whether you do it yourself, whether you have your friends to do it for you, if you deny the rune, TC is going to be starving uh, for that mana. He's still Although he's getting a lot of gold very early on, as we said, he already has that bottle, and he's up to nine creep kills now already. Ten is uh, he's basically got just about every single one so far. Uh, we see a hook from Diddy, just a little bit optimistic there. He doesn't get a nine on the list though, but uh, TC with that level two aether shot going to go ahead and do a little bit of harassing. I think this lane is going to get a little bit more difficult for Dindy if uh, he continues to let TC get all these last hits. Meanwhile, Navi doing what Navi does best. Gank you under your tower, kill you under your tower, and then push your tower. We have a TP in from Light of Heaven, they make sure to get the kill. And suddenly we have four or five guys on the bottling Diabolic Edict. Should be up, and that tower is just not long for life. Tier 1 is going to go down in a second. Tier 2 is going to get pushed down as well, because guess what? Once the Treants and whatever else chase away the Windrunner, Diabolic Edict is going to have the free reign. Oh, we see mass TP for Complexity. A little bit of counter action here as they were not doing in Game 1. They're going to go ahead and try and defend this tower. Now, this could end up poorly. There's a lot of new oh damage. Oh my yep. god. IX Spike is immediately going to go down as well. Uh, Fluff and stuff getting harassed as well. Puppy just chasing him away. Uh, we see a nice ward there just blocking Fluff, taking a bit more damage. Oh, I think Enigma is going to go down as well. Yes, he does. And that Tier 1 tower at bottom probably going to go down next. Although Enigma uh, did drop a couple Eidolons. Maybe is going to make keep it alive just a little little bit longer there but they did lose two heroes to do so so not exactly an acceptable trade at minute three yes um, i mean even the defender the tower they might as well lost the tower and not lose the heroes because the go difference yeah. already 1000 in favor of navi one to simply not tp against navi like that as they pay for it dearly now of course profit tp back to the top lane invoker is a hero that is a strong strong mid game hero but that's all that he is. He cannot really become a, a big force in this early game engagement. So, and of course, if Navi is pushing this game so hard and fast, this might just be a very short game where uh, the Invoker can't really take advantage of his strong powers. Yeah, basically, he, he's going to be... He, he really can't do a whole lot until he gets level 2 Invoke. Level 1 Invoke, you technically have two skills in a battle, but they're not very strong. Uh, at level 2, you get three skills, and two of them are usually going to be pretty decent. Um, it gets it gets a little better for him once you hit level 12. When you hit level 12, he starts to become a powerhouse that we all know and love as in Boker. Uh, but until that time comes, he's going to need to farm. He's got his phases. He's probably going to want to get himself a Jangle. It looks like he is going Quas Wex. Um, you know, pretty standard, pretty standard build. So, uh, but that said, he really can't afford to TP around the map and leave his lane. He's not. He doesn't want to be going and ganging too much. Though he does have that potential. Uh, he really needs to just get XP above all else. Yep. Light of Heaven's getting quite a bit of EXP as well. He's up to level 5 just after this Creep Wave. And once he's hits level 6, the ganking also really starts to roll out of control uh, as well. Every gank is going to be extra nuke hitting you. Oh, and yeah. uh, it's, it's really going to hurt. It makes pushing a lot easier after those Navi successful ganks, which they, you know, pull off every other minute. We see a TP here on bottom on Hannah Montana. Looks like he is going to get immediately treated with the Centaur, no less. So he gets the three down uh, with Power Shot, but he gets stunned immediately. He is going to win right away, and I believe he's going to be fine, even with the... Uh... Uh, electrical storm there of a uh, uh, lightning storm rather from the uh, Leshark. Only level one, so not doing a whole lot of damage. Yep, fluff and stuff going on bot on bot lane. He does have the soul ring up, so we'll have a lot of mana regeneration to okay. keep the mana converting. Yeah, but we do have four heroes from Navi now again focusing bottom. This time we're just gonna have walks there as fluff is gonna go ahead and go there yet again. Fluff and stuff only level three as he has been forced to this bottom lane a number of times now, but I believe uh, this tower is gonna go down nonetheless. So all they're really doing is trying to defend maybe t tier two. 
Uh, this is just balls to the wall pushing by Nabby right now. This is awesome. Uh, their basic strategy against Voker, hey, we'll kill you before you get level 12, bro. Yeah, and uh, this this is Navi, so they're definitely very capable of doing so. Diabolic Eating comes in right now. And uh, look at that tower's HP just drops rapidly. That's not even a max Diabolic Eating. Diabolic Eating putting this tower half HP already. And these guys are out of mana. You can see that the Windrunner going all the way back to base to get some mana regeneration going on. And they finally defended this one, but... The next push is make, gonna make sure they get it. TC invisible on the bot lane. Unfortunately, these guys are sticking so close together that he can't really do too much. Unless he just like, you know, puts up a DC TC disable, war trap one, checks another shackle the last one, and be like, yo, triple kill, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I would I will point out Lestrak already has those uh, arcanes, not just arcanes, arcanes and 600 gold. So Lestrak getting some early farm. Now Lestrak is one of those uh, snowball heroes. Uh, if he doesn't get any kind of early farm. He kind of becomes just this this weak, easy to kill hero. But if he gets some farm, he becomes a tank that does massive amount of AOE DPS. That can be a very, very big problem. So uh, if they keep this pressure up and and, and Lestrat continues to survive, he could actually be a pretty strong problem. And we all know Havost is more than capable of carrying the day, uh, given enough gold. So we're gonna have a roam here, a smoke here in the middle. Looks like we're gonna go after TC. Misses the stun, but Diabolic Edict coupled with the uh, ultimate of uh, Diddy is gonna get the kill. He does drop the wards, and I believe he's gonna be able to survive this. Yes, just barely. Um, so it looks like the wards getting wasted there from TC, and TC going down. Man, this is not looking good so far for complexity. Not good at all. Again, like we talked about in game number one, Rasa is such a momentum based hero. He likes to stay alive, use those wards to actually push towers instead of trying to survive himself. And uh, not only did he not survive, he's gonna get his uh, mid tower pushed down as well. As if you look at Complexity's heroes lineup, they're not really that good in terms of defending and push. And that's just might be it. Maybe they're saying, oh yeah, we have Invoker, that's a great defender as we see Dendi. Some beautiful hooks going on, but again, the Invoker is not gonna be into the effect much later on. In the Invoker forced to come into mid lane, you generally don't see that so early. Dendi waiting for a hook. Is he gonna get it? No mana just right now. Havos, very low HP tree and gets summoned, and that's gonna force everyone back. Uh, even though they didn't get too much after that first tower, they drew Jail from the top lane, and that means that he's not farming or leveling right now. Yeah, he's only level 7, he doesn't even have the Django yet, he did not have enough mana, he basically threw down two skills, and that was all of his mana pool, he had nothing left after that. Um, he was using Cold Snap up at top to try and just harass the lane, as you will, sorry, you are typically supposed to do with Invoker, but again, this is a large stretch of the very important early game that Invoker is not getting any, any XP, and that is... That is pretty problematic because since they're down 5-1, to one, they're going to be very reliant upon Invoker's mid-game capabilities uh, to really pull them back into this. And if he's not getting to mid-game fast enough, uh, they might just end up you know, getting way too far behind to make that even happen. So, um, Nice continued pressure here from Mavi. Checking out the CS here, we have Light of Heaven with 40 CS, Invoker with 43. Gotta keep in mind Light of Heaven was actually out of the lane for a while, so I'm surprised that to see the uh, JL not really keeping up with the CS. Dirty on TC here. 22 on fluff and stuff. I mean, on the radiant side, CS doesn't matter too much as they're getting so many kills and so many towers pushed down. Go difference chart, a healthy 4k in favor of the radiant side. In terms of item progression, we see already upgraded boots here on uh, on Havos, like you pointed out earlier, and they're gonna be really rich. Then he already has his urn, and I saw 2k go on Light of Heaven. So, haven't you really purchased too, too much of anything yet? He has a Sage's Mask, might be an Orchid, but we'll see. Indeed, he does already have those treasures. Let's grab a bit of an initiation here up top. We do have a, a mystic there from D, but he's gonna grab on flipping stuff does in the line. A nice ward trap from TC as we see so often. Maybe taking the Diddy down, yet they will get the Diddy. So uh, TC's legendary uh, le or uh, TC's legendary roster play coming into uh, effect there as we see instant ward trap on Diddy taking him down. Imagine to get a kill there in what looked like potentially a bad battle. Uh, for Complexity. Now, if Complexity can get this tier 1 tower, this would be so huge for them. Just to pull a foothold back into this game and maybe give them a chance here. We see more missed stuns from Havost. He continues to throw down, you know, stuns that aren't actually hitting anything. And we see that top tower does go down. In fact, Invoker ends up getting the last hit, which is big time. And it looks like, yes, they're going to get the, uh, the Enchantress of Puppy as well. So two kills and a tower. And I believe all of the Sentinel or uh, uh, Dire Heroes are going to survive. So nice battle there from uh, Complexing exactly what they needed to get themselves back into this. Man, Complexy showing some signs of life. They were really, really in a disadvantage. And this is only, what, 8 minutes, 10, 10 minutes in the game? Uh, but we yeah. were about to say, oh man, Complexity is about to lose this one. But now, they're right back in it. They're still in a very disadvantaged position, but they still are showing some signs of life. Mid tower, the tier 1 tower, and the tier 1 tower on the bot here for Navi are fairly low as well. So they can be brought down after a successful team fight. And again, and like what Nebula pointed out in game number 1, this is what uh, Complexity excels in, winning those team fights. And uh, let's see if they could do it in game number 2. They had a little bit of trouble doing it in game number 1. 
The one difference I see between game number one and two, while Navi has got a bit of a stronger early advantage than in game one, um, Complexity does have Rasta and Invoker. Yes. Uh, with with TC's Rasta and Invoker on their team, it makes it a whole lot easier for them to actually win the mid game. So I feel like they're a little bit more positioned to take advantage of any kind of disruption. They do go ahead and tornado um, tornado the Dendi. It looks like a hook here trying to save, but no one said he actually kills Hannah Montana. Arzart does end up dying as well, uh, but it looks like other heroes are going to survive. We see a throwdown of an Ur on TC, and they may end up getting the shaman here. Oh. It's like ultimate from Fearing. Yes, he. Oh, he's going to survive here. A hook there catches the IX Mike, though. A little bit of a poor TP. Another missed stun from a Vos there, and this is starting to cost Nabby uh, just a little bit too many. We see a TP in here from Light of Heaven, though. It looks like IX Mike will go down. TC perhaps going to survive. We see a slow as well as that Urn. I believe one more attack. He goes for a war My Hit god! Go! Oh, assassination, baby! Oh, TC, you are too plus. Diddy does go ahead and walk around there and get that kill, though, so uh, not completely, completely uh, a loss there, but. Another nice play by TC. If not for Dindy's uh, spectacular position, that would have been uh, incredible. War trap count two out of three, as Man. TC is. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, anytime you get more traps than you don't, you are too that good. Is amazing. Yeah, if you get if you get one or two war traps a game, you feel good about yourself. This guy gets six to seven. It's ridiculous. I, I think I think uh, I think uh, TC go to bed every night and be like, oh man, I missed a war trap today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit disappointed. Yeah. You docked it yet? <laughs> no man, TC, oh, man. TC's too good. Now, Complexity, despite of the good war trapping, still very, very behind. They are down by three kills. And again, Invoker's not farming. Go, go, bro, go to that top lane, get some farm, have a TP and defend if necessary, man. He needs to bail out his team on the on his back as his team's getting heavier and heavier. Too heavy for him to carry. Maybe Dendi in position. He's gonna grab yet another hook. This is this is where Dendi's uh, punch excels in, where the team fight is just so messy, where you allow him to just get into whatever uh, position he wants to be in and just hook. He said he was able to set up kills on Avenge earlier, set up a kill on the TC much later as well. And uh, if, yeah. he, if he gets even bigger and bigger, I've seen him in a professional game where he got up to like 4k HP just through like flesh gain. And it makes it even diff more and more difficult to kill him. Look at his HP, he's at 1400 HP 13 minutes in. This is pretty insane. He's already so difficult to kill now. Yeah, that one thing Dindy really excels at is positioning in team battles, and, and Pudge is a hero that really needs to maximize position. We do see a drop immediately catching Dindy here. They may be able to pick him off. This would be pretty big for them if they can take him down. Yes, Dindy is going to go down Shadow Shaman getting that kill, so now 8-6, to six, uh, and Complexity doing a very nice job pulling that kill count back. Now, the difference is in Game 1, they actually had a kill count advantage um, on top of them and being behind in towers, so... Um, they actually still managed to lose that game, though they, they made it very close by uh, kind of pulling back in it in the mid-game. So they actually have a bit of a kill count loss still, but they are down four towers already uh, to just one. It looks like they're maybe going to go for that tier one. Now the problem is you can't go after a tower against Navix. They're going to go after yours as well, and they are more than happy to trade tier ones for tier twos all day. Uh, we do see drop rewards here from TCM. I believe they are going to get this tower. But the question is, can Navi get tier two, tier 2 up top of time? I don't think they're going to be able to, actually. We see some TPs here from Complexity. Yep, mass TP comes in, in, and that just shows how important it is to defend those towers. Tower is going to destroy by the wards. Nicely done here by the uh, Complexity squad. In terms of goal difference, it is going to be edging a little bit closer back to the Complexity's uh, end of things. And again, the mid-game superiority, i got to give it to Complexity. They have Invoker, they have Rasta, Windrunner. These are some of the strongest mid-game lineup that you can have. And, uh, I mean, it's so hard to call these these fights here for the Radiant side because this, so much of them is dependent on his, hitting the scale. Whether your Gale hits, whether your Split Earth hits, whether the ho those hooks hits, it, it makes a difference in terms of winning or losing the team fight. So it's so difficult to call whether they're going to have an advantage in, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so for Na'Vi here. Yeah, what we've seen so far is Havos has basically missed every single one of his Split Earths, and that has really uh, cost them a couple of these team fights that they could have won if he had done that. So. Um, look for him to maybe hit a few more. I know Havos is probably not going to be happy about that. He is a very good player, and um, I'm sure he's a little bit unhappy with his with his split uh, with his split Earth this game so far. Like they are going to go up the tier two tower. We see an EMP drop down, just running everybody back a little bit, uh, as well as Glyph at the same time. Diddy hits a nice hook on TC though. This could be big time. We see a tornado from Invoker. I think it's not going to be enough. Yes, Ross does go down. We see the a nice black ball on three heroes there. Uh, Fury trying to do as much damage as he does. A goes to go down. Looks like Fluffin's is going to go down as well. Ix Mike too, and Hannah. TC did buy back, and I believe Impetus uh, coupled with it. Yes, he is going to go down as well. Vos getting himself a triple kill, and only Jail is going to live to see the light of day at the end of this battle. But uh, as I mentioned, TC did buy back yes. for that battle, so they lost five deaths there and top tier two. That was a huge loss, a huge battle loss.
uh, for complexity, and it's starting to look really poor for them now. Havul says, no need to hit Splitter, because you don't need to aim with that ultimate or the Cyborg either. Just turns both of them on and just be like, hey oh He walks right next to you, holding your hands, and then sending you into the grave. And now the push continues as the Diabolic Eater does have a pretty short cooldown. And they're going to be defending this one right now, but yeah, I, I think Na'Vi very happy with what they got so far. They're going to go back region up and come back fighting even harder. Yeah, up to a almost 8k gold advantage now, looking at almost a 9k gold advantage for Na'Vi, uh, which is a lot faster than they got there in the last game. So they're they're even more uh, they're even more in favor than they were in the last game, though. Uh, even though we're talking about how much stronger Complexity's mid game is this game, they're also losing early game by a lot more. Yes. So it doesn't it doesn't look very good for them right now. I feel like they've got to they needed to win that battle, and then if they had won that battle, I think they would have got more to level footing, not even like in a good position, just level footing. Yes. So. Some of the things that right now Complexity have to do to get back this game is they have to get up to a mecha as soon as possible because all these team fight that the Venomancer O oh, does so much. Generally, you don't see Venomancer O oh, com accomplishing so much, but AA was able to drop it in the middle of four or five heroes, no mecha to regen it up. And even though Fluff and stuff got a pretty decent black hole, the damage potential of that Venom is just too much, and uh, they lost HP very rapidly. Now it looks like they're going to try to use this as a Roshan attempt. They do have the wards, but I'm not too sure whether they can do it. And uh, going into uh, the Roche pit against the Pudge, it's like, yo, yeah. there's a free hook. Pick one of us off, buddy. Uh, Hannah Montana does only have a buckler, though. She does have 650 gold, so uh, he may be pretty close to uh, to a, what a, uh, a mecha here. He's, he's got about 1,000 gold. He has no items in his uh, stash or on the courier. So, yeah, he, he's trying to get a mecha as quickly as he can, but he is just way behind. He got so underleveled on bottom. Uh, he didn't get any farm. He's only level 6 right now compared to 9, 10, 10, 11, and 9. Uh, for Navi, so he's really behind. It's been a rough game for Hannah so far. Obviously, that bot lane was very, very difficult for him, and they did focus a lot with him. Four heroes going bottom very early on, making it very hard. Of course, when Complexity is down, let's smoke up, and they'll look for a gank or so. <laughs> and now they <laughs> do have a force staff. Force staff on the Invoker. If they can pick off Pudge, oh, there's a tornado. That is going to hit, but positioning not really in the favor. Oh, TC no, gets hooked. <laughs> You see an ultimate from Vino as well, catching all of the heroes, and that is going to be a team wipe for Sentinel. Just a fantastic hook from Dendi, forced Complexity to immediately initiate on there. Uh, we saw some really strong AoE damage from uh, Havost, followed up by an ultimate from AA, just to ensure that no shenanigans happen. And I believe this game is going to be over before it started. Uh, just 18 and a half minutes in here, and I believe they're about to lose their middle. Don't ban Invoker, just beat him before he does anything. Exactly, that's what you gotta do, man. You're not even level 12 yet, bro. You got no base. No base. Right now, no base. Uh, we see complexity. Uh, Most even rotates up top to go ahead and take down that tower by himself. Using that dive off. So if two tier threes go down. Not even. I even decided to go straight for racks. But they are gonna get a racks. Oh, another nice hook takes that ice mic. So immediately another hero down. I believe Navi. Uh, gonna take this one down and win this series 2-0, exerting their dominance in the Dota 2 competitive scene. Uh, showing uh, complexity what's up and that they're still the top dogs right now. How how do you beat a team like, oh my god, another hook on TC. Uh, the, the War Trap is down though, so I guess you can sleep a little bit help, uh, happily tonight, but <laughs> still. Right now, Dandy, how, how do you beat a team like Na'Vi, where they could beat you with random mean picks? They, they pull out a punch if they feel necessary. And they just pick and ban so good, they play so good. And they're just so fun to watch as well. Yeah, their strategy and map control is really just legendary. Their ability to to understand exactly what you have to do and how to counteract that is just is just impressive. Um, going bottom very early on, that's a thing that a lot of teams do, but they understand when and where to do it and what heroes to do that are going to be able to, uh, capable of doing that. I mean, they know with a Leshrac, Pudge, Furion. I mean, that's that's not a trio you see super often, but it's just been so so uh, impressive for them. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see a 20 minute win here from Navi. So, uh, game one looked up to the height very easily, game two a little less so. But still, very fun to watch. Very fun to watch, absolutely. Navi, always entertaining. I, I remember when Navi first hit the scene, both of us were just like, oh, this team is amazing to watch. It has not changed since. Yep. I think the kill difference in, in, in one time it was like 10 to 8. And now. Uh, 24 to 24 at 8, the gold difference chart is somewhat meaningless at this one here. A little bit over 20k. GG gets called. And what a what a best of two series. Navi wins both of them. Rather convincingly, this one. Yeah. I really expected this to go 1 1. I thought Complexity was going to be able to make the adjustment and get the. Especially after those pick phase. I really thought after the pick phase that they had the advantage here. Um, but man, Dindy's hooks is just too much for him. 
Dendi was clearly game. not aiming for the Enigma, but you know when you're pro like that, you get away with saying, "Ah, no, I aimed for Enigma." Come on, man, he aims for a clutch of heroes. You're gonna get one of them. <laughs> a gaggle of heroes. Dropping uh, English knowledge here on my Chinese uh, friend here. Multiple heroes going down here. It looks like this game is over. So, any final thoughts here? Um, how do, do you think? I mean, I feel like Complexity is capable of beating Navi. Um, this game, uh, we just kind of see the power of Navi when they're really focused. We saw during the ban phases of both games, they really did their they did the research. They knew what was up. They heard probably a lot of talk about how Complexity was beating everybody and how maybe they were the hot team uh, on the Dota scene. And Navi just wanted to flex their muscle a little bit. Like, oh no, boys, we still got this. And of course, uh, Les just getting a Desolator, just just to be cool. We're supposed to have a Desolator. That is nice. That is nice. A little bit of a rubbins there. Gotta be honest, but that's fine. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I mean, Complexly, I was rooting for them, being that they are the American team. Uh, they are kind of the quote unquote the underdog of new team. But Navi just seems almost unbeatable right now. They are going to be playing against EG in just a moment. Uh, you guys could go check that out right now. But let's just uh, leave that as on the defense. Correct? Right. Let, let's just relish in this uh, Navi victory right now. They win this two and zero, and this was a rather ga short game. Short game number two. I hope you guys enjoyed today's broadcast. We are done for today, of course. That was Nebula from DotaComSeries.com. You can check him out on DC. Just a sec, just a sec. Okay. We will be back on Wednesday uh, with all um, Absolute Legends taking on a Fnatic. So just uh, yeah, Fnatic. Well, really Fnatic focused. was able to take a game from Complexity. So you know they're making themselves a name for themselves as well. Sorry, yeah. did you have more? I just kind of cut you off. <laughs> no, 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 that's it. Go ahead and uh, do the closing here, but. All right. Uh, yeah, nothing more else to say. You can check me out on YouTube. Uh, Luminous Inverse is my YouTube name. Uh, if you guys enjoy these games, I have a lot more over there for you guys as well. And of course, Nebula Cast on DotaComZeros.com. That's it from us. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, Nebula Luminous signing off. See you guys.